Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we're going to start to implement the actual security rules of our sample application. So the first security rule that we want to put in place is to make sure that the data is only visible to authenticated users. So all the data that you see here, including the courses data, but also the lessons data, whenever you click on view course and you see the lessons of a course, all of that data, you want to make sure that it's only accessible to correctly authenticated users that have either authenticated using social login or have signed in using email and password. So let's see how can we implement this security logic. Now, what we have here is an initial set of rules that we have used to illustrate the different types of permissions that we can grant. So here, let's remove this and let's make the data read only for the moment. Also, let's start here with the simplest example, which is let's make the courses data read only, meaning that it can be read by anyone independently if the person is authenticated or not. And the same goes here for the lessons data. We won't be needing this rule here, so let's go ahead and let's remove it. So this is our starting point. We have here a database with a couple of collections, courses and lessons, and everything is read only and publicly accessible by anyone, authenticated or not. So now how do we ensure that the courses data is only reachable by authenticated users? To understand how this works, let's switch here to a larger window and let's go here to our login screen. So whenever we go to the login screen and we sign in with one of these two methods, we are going to get back a JSON web token proving the identity of the user. We have already made use of that JSON web token here in our application by adapting here our user interface. For example, we are showing here a profile picture of the user and we are showing and hiding certain buttons depending on the authentication status of the user. But this is not the main use of the JSON web token. The JSON web token that we have received is going to be held in memory by the Firebase SDK. Whenever we do a Firestore request from our web client using Angular Fire, for example, the Firebase SDK, which Angular Fire is using under the hood, is going to grab the JSON web token that identifies the user and it's going to attach that JSON web token to the request sent to the Firestore database server. So whenever a request for a read or a write operation arrives at the Firestore database server, it's going to include a JSON web token that uniquely identifies the user. That JSON web token is going to include the user unique identifier, identifying the user in the list of Firebase authentication users, and the JSON web token can also contain some extra data. That extra data is known in Firebase terminology as a custom claim. So let's have a look here at what data can be included. For example, this user here, which is an administrative user, is going to include here a custom claim in the JSON web token, specifying that the user is an administrator. You could have other sorts of custom claims with all sorts of different types of data included in your JSON web token. There is a size limit, you cannot add a lot of data, but you can add a lot of useful information about the user. All of this information in the JSON web token, including the user unique identifier and any custom claims that might identify special roles or privileges that the user has, all of this is going to be made available to Firestore security rules. And we can write rules depending on the content of that data. So for example, here, the courses collection, we might want to make this courses collection only readable to authenticated users in the following way. We are going to start by grabbing all the data available in the incoming request. So this request is a request for either reading or writing data to the Firestore database. And here in the request object, we have available an off object. The off object contains all the information available in the JSON web token. And this includes the user identifier and any custom claims that the user might have as well. In our case, we want to make sure that the user is correctly authenticated. So we are going to access here the UID property, which contains the unique Firebase authentication identifier for this user. 
we want to make sure that this is different than null. If this value is null, it means that the user is an anonymous and non-authenticated user. If the UID property is present, then the user is correctly authenticated. Notice that the UID property is only going to be filled in if the request that arrives at the Firestore database server contains a correctly signed and valid JSON web token. So only after verifying the authenticity and validity of the JSON web token will the Firestore server consider that indeed the user is this particular user. So if you just attach any JSON web token to your request to the database, that's not going to work. So the Firestore server is going to verify that the JSON web token is valid and only after verifying that, it's going to fill in the UID property and run the security rules. So if somebody tries to fake the identity of a given user, that's not going to work. The only way that this UID property is going to be filled in is if the user is correctly authenticated using Firebase authentication. So now with this rule, only users that are correctly authenticated with a valid user email or password or social login are going to be able to read the data. Any anonymous user will be denied access to the data. And we can apply a similar condition here to the lessons collection. So for the moment, let's go ahead and let's copy paste the same rule. And with this, we now have here a new valid set of rules. Let's make sure that they are deployed to our emulator and let's try this out here in a larger window. And we can already see here that after reloading the application and making sure that we are logged out from the application, we already get here an error as expected. So as you can see, this is a security error. It's very generic. An attacker would not have here a lot of information to understand why the request was denied, but the main functionality is there. So the data of the courses is no longer publicly accessible to anonymous, non-authenticated users as expected. Now let's see what happens if we now log in to our application using the login screen. Let's go ahead and choose sign in with Google. Remember, these are test users that exist here in your Firebase authentication emulator. You can find them here on the authentication tab. Let's choose here this predefined admin user that we have been using so far. We're going to simulate a social login with Google. And after a moment, we can see that the user that is now correctly authenticated can access the data. And let's try here the course screen and confirm that indeed we can also access the lessons data as expected. So now our data in our database is visible only by authenticated users. But right now, anyone can create an account using their own social login or by creating a new user with a new email and password and still access the data. In a future lesson, we're going to show how to make sure that the user is not only correctly authenticated, but also that the user belongs to a list of previously known and approved users. So only users that are well known and meant to access the application will be able to create an account and access the data. We are going to learn how to do this in a future lesson. Right now, let's take a moment to notice that there is some code repetition here. So we are repeating here the exact same condition. In order to make things a little bit more readable and in order to avoid repeating code, let's define here a function. So in security rules, you can define functions. We're going to make sure that our function is visible in any of these matching blocks. So let's define it here at the match block that targets the root of the database. We're going to be defining here a function that is not going to take any arguments for the moment. We're going to call this is authenticated and this is going to return true if the user is authenticated and it's going to return false if the user is not authenticated. So functions in Firestore security rules need to follow a very specific format. They can only return a Boolean, either true or false. 
So let's go ahead and let's return the result of evaluating this condition here. We're going to return the result of this check. So this function is going to return true if the user is authenticated and it's going to return false if the user is not correctly authenticated. We can then call the function in the following way. We are going to take here the function name and we're going to replace here this statement. In a very similar way, we're going to apply the same condition here to the lessons collection. Let's now deploy and try out this new set of rules to make sure that everything is working. So we still can't access the data if we are not authenticated and if we now quickly log in here using the sign in page and let's use here sign in with Google. Let's take this user and let's confirm that indeed after authenticated we can now access both the courses and the lessons. So everything is working as expected but now our security rules are a lot more readable and there is no repetition of code. We can see that we are still repeating here this exact same condition, both for the courses and for the lessons collections, but this is necessary. There is no way around this. We need to always specify who can read each collection separately. These rules here for the courses condition, as we have learned in our fundamentals lesson, do not cascade here to the nested lessons collection. Let's now continue to learn more about security rules. Let's see how can we use them to add some data validation to the data that gets inserted in our database in a very similar way to what we could get with a schema definition in a traditional SQL database. 